This is Mike Skolton. I'm here to show you how to run this 4000 rake. We thought it'd be best to give you a video tutorial of uh, some little tips and tricks about the rake. Uh, we have it hooked up to a Kubota M7 tractor. Um, not sure what tractor you're gonna hook it to, but you need 540 PTO and you need a set, well, one set of hydraulic remotes. So just, it just has two hoses. And then you'll need a half moon electrical connector. And I said 540 PTO, but this is how it looks. Um, you don't need a return line. So I just have, I just have the two hook there, PTO shaft, of course. And you do have a, an electrical line that I'll show you in the cab that connects to the monitor. Um, one thing, it is folded up right now. This is where I would put it in transport. You can get this thing really low to the ground, as you can see, um, when you're in transport. If you have low wires, that's a big concern. Um, but when you unfold it, you'll need to raise it up a little bit. Um, just a heads up. We have the top bars taken taken out of it. They are in the storage position, which is right here. Um, just for transport, those are nice to take out. Honestly, you could probably get by leaving the bars in on your tractor when you're pulling it around when you fold it up. But just for the sake of reloading on a truck, we took them out. Um, but there's a nice storage position for those. Um, we put duct tape on them. This keeps the water out of them. Uh, Believe it or not, it hasn't rained here in a week, and today that we chose to film, it's been raining all day. Um, but the other thing you want to look at, um, we'll unfold it first, but the main frame on the rake, you want to try to keep that level uh, when you're raking. When I say the main frame, it's that it's that white piece, the white hold the white frame. Yeah, um, you want that level to the ground when you're raking. Otherwise, it won't rake very nice. Um, we're gonna unfold it. You will need to have your hydraulics on. Um, and set in like an infinity position or a position that just keeps the hydraulics circulating the rake when you're running it because you want to do up down with the rake um, when you get to the end of the rows or whatever you have you um, we'll start it up and I'll show you how to unfold it with the monitor inside so this right here is the connector um, from the rake it's a I call it the half moon um, like this tractor does not have it so we run an adapter to the battery uh, we just run it just for demonstration purposes we ran an adapter this is the side you'll need on the tractor it's hard to hold you'll need that side on the tractor this is the rake this is the tractor so i started the tractor up um, one note when you hook straight to the battery this monitor will always be on so i do recommend either unplugging it or unplugging it from the battery or just trying to turn the monitor off, but I would recommend unplugging it. But the monitor's lit up. This is what she looks like when you start it. It says Kloss liner. It recognizes that the rake's hooked to it, which is good. Um, I'm gonna try to get in a position where I can film and press the buttons at the same time. Hold on. So this is what the rake looks up like lit up. Um, it recognizes the rake's there. Um, first thing I wanna do, I'm waiting for the tractor to warm up, but. I have it connected to the green, whatever your tractor might be, but um, you're gonna wanna need to turn that hydraulic so it's constant flow. On this tractor, it's really easy just to just touch that. And I have it set to infinity. So when I stroke this remote this way, it is pumping at 100%. You might wanna dial that differently on your tractor. I shut the window for noise. Um, so when I'm in the rake screen, you want to push this button. It is not a touch screen, so as much as you press those, it won't do anything. You have to press the button next to it, which is this one. Now it'll bring us into the rake. It's telling me that the rake was locked uh, when I folded it just a second ago. So I acknowledge that with that button. So now we're in the uh, we're in the rake main menu. Um, if you notice, up here is your uh, toggles. So this is the it's showing we're in the road menu right now. This is the field menu, and this is like a uh, service menu, but we'll go, we are in the road menu. I have the hydraulics going. It's a little hard to see, but the rake is back there. I'm gonna open the window back up. So this means up, so you'd fold it up. We wanna go down, and like I said, you wanna raise that three point on this one. I'm gonna raise the three point a little bit. Oops. And I'm also gonna raise the wheels. This is the raising of the wheels. As you can see, I'm holding, I have to hold that button in order for it to keep raising, but it raised the wheels on the rig. So it gives us a little more ground clearance. 
So now I'm gonna unfold it. So I'm gonna press this button, and it's gonna take me to a different menu. And I have to hold this button down the whole time while it unfolds. So I'm gonna push it right now, and it's gonna unfold, but I have to keep holding it. It takes a few seconds to figure out what it's doing, but now it is, um, it is unfolding. It does the front first, usually, and then the back raises up. Hope it's easy for you to see. I'm gonna stop a second. Let's see if I can get this thing up. Uh, let off the button. Now I'm holding the button again. So the back, that back's unlocking right now. It's unfolding. I'm still holding this button the whole time. Well, that works. And the hydraulics are running. And now those tables are going out. Just like that. Once the front ones go out all the way, usually the back ones will do next. I think they're in. Said to me, we're unfolded. So now, it automatically, after I did that, it went from road mode, now it says you're in field mode. So, so now that we're in field mode, um, we're gonna lower the um, rake down. Now it says, this is auto one, auto two. This is like if you wanna just manually lift one basket up at a time, you would press that, and you could select which basket you wanna control, and you lift it up and down with these buttons. We're not gonna do that right now, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back out of that. Oops, I don't have this mounted firmly. So we're gonna go auto. Auto one is gonna be down, I imagine. Yep. So we're gonna go auto down with everything. This should be this button. This is the screen, if you were raking, I think you would be in. And I just pressed that button once. You didn't have to hold it. You just had to press it once. And then if you're at the end of the row, you wanna press this button. Like if you're, you know, wanting to lift it up and it lifts it up, you just have to press it once. So if I'm running the rake, if I'm running the rake, when at the end of the row, I'd wanna be on this screen and I would wanna go auto down. And it went down. And then I'd wanna go auto up. Just like that. Really sweet. So if you wanna get out of this screen, you just press right there press a little harder and if you wanted to like I said I'll, sh I'll get them down first um, auto down if you wanted to what I would is go manual mode and say you wanted to rake with just the just the back two so you select this one you say hey I want just just that one to go up, just like that, and say I want this one. You could so you could highlight them both. They're both highlighted, and they both would go up. I'm gonna unhighlight that one since I just did it. So if you wanted to rake with just the back two for a little bit, you could do it that way. Um, and then, for instance, I'm gonna highlight them both, and I'm gonna put them both down. Mind you, I have the hydraulics going the whole time, uh, set in an infinity position, I call it. Um, so I wanna go X. So I just wanna, the screen you're probably gonna be in most of the time is auto one, I call it. And that's just when you're gonna be doing up downs at the end of the rows and such. Just like that. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna show you something outside a second, what I check on the rake every time I rake. And we're gonna go show that to you. So when the rake is down on the ground, I like to get outside of it. And that, that bar, to make sure the main frame of the rake is level, is very important. It will rake the best when it's level. Right now, I think it's a little tip to the back. I'm gonna fix that. And I usually do this outside, norm, most tractors nowadays. And you do it with a three-point. You just lower the three-point slightly. That's how, you, that's how you check when your three-point 
is in the right position on this rake is is if that that main white frame of the whole machine is level to the eye um, a lot of times when i see guys even around here locally where we sell these rakes they'll stick a new operator in it and they won't 100 percent tell them all the tricks i will see a lot of rakes i'm just going to show you as an example they'll be running they'll be running like this and that's an that's no it's hard on everything it's hard on the it's hard on all the joints as you can see like they're all getting stressed to the front um, and it's also hard if you see that pto shaft on this tractor if, the, if someone and i've seen many people running this way I, I usually try to tell them it's not the right way and they fix that problem but just make sure you have that main frame level because if you don't you'll run through parts quicker on these rakes than you should uh, and then it's just harder on everything uh, a disclaimer on this rake we recommend running the rake no faster than five miles an hour if you want the most longevity out of it um, and it, we just recommend that that's that's a good say you'll rake a lot of grass stuff five mile an hour um, just a disclaimer so and then to change your settings here you might already seen this but you can change your your rake height well, this lever, yeah, just turn it. And it, the gauge is right there. So you set them all, see that red gauge right there on that? That's how you know where you're set out on each basket. And then when you, when you get it where you want it, you lock it like that. The rake tines are probably the best in the industry, in my opinion. They are... This one's a new one, um, but there's a little ledge here. You can hardly see it. If you hit something, it will bend here. That's where it's gonna bend in retrospect to the bar. And that saves you from bending more important components back here. Uh, and if you need to replace one, it happens. You flip this up and you slide it out. You might need two hands, but it just slides out with your hole in it. And then to lock it back in, go here. It's important for timing purposes when you're putting the rake bar back in to line that point with that point. Um, it's very, very, very important because that's how it keeps the whole thing in time. Um, so keep that in mind. I just wanted to tell you another very important thing with running this rake. You want to run it at 540 RPM of PTO. Um, even the shaft's 540, your tractor shaft will be 540. And some tractors have this this component to it where you can change no matter what the shaft is you can change it from a 540 to a thousand just make sure it's on 540 with the 540 shaft if you run it at a thousand rpm setting on your pto if your tractor has that you will throw the bars those they'll just, they'll just eject out of the rake it can't run that fast um, just be aware of that so when you're in the rake settings that's the road mode that's the field mode that's the service mode when you click like say auto one, it will give you one more setting up here. That's your width setting. If you wanna change the width of what you're raking, you'd wanna select over. The way to get to that setting, right now we're on that one. We need to get over there, press this little arrow here. And we are into width setting. Width setting, so like if you wanna narrow up like how, how big your windrow is at the end, these are the back ones. I would recommend doing this with it up in the air. So first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the rake with this one. You don't want to change your width when it's on the ground because you'll end up dragging those wheels across the ground. So for instance, I'm going to sell it. I want to make a really tight windrow. I'm going to move. It's hard to tell, but they are moving. I'm going to suck that windrow in. And it's, that's the tightest windrow we can get. Those, those things are all the way in. And say I wanted to suck the front end as well, and that would be over here. you can suck them in so say we want to make the tightest we don't have a lot to do there's a really heavy crop and we want to take a smaller swath we do that and we now we'll be raking a much smaller area we got it all the way sucked in that's how you get to that screen it's right there so and in each one of these screens you see the auto up down so that just that gives you the ability to adjust it and then still be able to oh I'm at the end of the row we're gonna lift it all up. And it does it in sequence the way it's supposed to. Front first, back second. 
and then say, oh, I'm in bigger crop. I want to go and, and put the rake out again. You have to do have to hold it, the button. And we're in really big crop. So in this combination, the rake, the front ones are all the way out and the back ones are all the way in. It should still rake, but you might leave a streak because you need to move the, probably the back ones out just a tad to be able to pick up what that front one's throwing. So yeah, just a, you might have to adjust, depends on the crop, it might take it, it might not. But, um, so we're gonna move the uh, back ones out all the way. And that's max. So now we're gonna go down. I'm doing fake raking right now because we have the bars pulled out ready for transport. Um, but that's that's what it will look like when you're moving. You just follow the ground. If I was raking, I might adjust a couple of the baskets. I showed you how to do that. Uh, so the back ones are probably, I can tell that back one is too low. So I'll go adjust that right now and show you how that's done. Yeah, I just went 20 feet and I could see that front one's digging over here. So it's just a, could be uneven ground, but also it could just be, it's a little, needs to go up a little bit. And our gauge is right there. And we, yeah, we're, we need to change this a little bit. So what we do is we raise her up. I did realize part of the reason that that one was digging a little bit too it's because I don't have this 100% level. So, like I said, I just go here, raise it up a smidge. That fixes some of your problems. But, yeah, you just want to get, unfold it, drive it a little bit forward, and just make sure nothing's digging. Um, make sure it's level ground. It's not super level over there, but anyways. So I'm going to fold up the rake for you to show you how that's done. Um, first things first, we will get out of, we will get up. So we gotta push it up so it lifts all the baskets. Folding it's pretty cool. So once it's up like that, we will X out of this screen and we will X out of that screen. And you see how now we can toggle over to this screen, the road mode screen. So we wanna go up, see those arrows pointing up? So we tap that once. And now we have to hold this and it will fold it up for us. Fold it up. Again, I always like to kind of X out of that screen. I like to lower my wheels a little bit, as much as I can. Probably about right there. And for transport, I like to get out and see where the rake's sitting on, in correlation to the ground. And I do the rest of the adjustment with a three point to get the front, uh, to get the rig level for road transport is pretty important as well. That's getting pretty low. You probably don't have to get that low, especially with the bars out of it. Um, anyways, that's how you fold it up for road transport. Pretty easy once you have the hydraulics going uh, and you understand the monitor. Might take you a few minutes, but after that, you'll be a pro. One more trick when folding up. You wanna make sure this basket, it's the basket, it goes underneath this bar. See the guide is right there. If you don't watch it, it could go on top and then you won't get your narrowest fold. Uh, you wanna make sure that basket goes under that guide bar when you fold up. Another thing when folding up, you need to set the lock. I forgot to say that before. Um, it helps to get a little narrower. So it's gonna, we're not done here. You're gonna grab and it 
it didn't lock. So you have to do the lock. It is, it's those little two arrows with the red, the red thing, they'll suck up. I'll show you what button to push. So we'll get out of here. We'll go over here. Whoops, wrong one. Don't go that way. Then you gotta check. Yep. And what we want to do is this is the locking button. So that locks the rake. So we want to push that button. Let me push it again. Oh, sorry. You want to go to manual. That's a manual button. You hit that first. And then you want to lock it with this button right here. So I'll hold that button and you'll see those little things go up. Now it sucked it up. So now she's locked and loaded. Like that. We're good for road. So those are the two indicators that it's locked. Those two red bars matched up with those arrows. That means this thing is locked. So I hope you appreciated that and got a good feel for how to operate this rake. Um, some key takeaways, 540 PTO, it's gonna be a 540 PTO connection, but make sure your tractor is also set to 540. If it's on a thousand, those bars will fly off. I've done it before. Um, two, make sure that frame is level. That's a big, big component of making this rake work correctly. Number three, five miles an hour is our recommended operating speed. Any faster, you're subject to damage more stuff. Um, and uh, you take that risk as you may. Um, number four, have your hydraulics running all the time to make that all the functionality of that controller work. If I think of anything more, I'll give you a call, but I just wanna give you a quick tutorial how to run the rake without throwing you the wolves, without any help. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Give me a call if you have any questions. I hope it makes a beautiful windrow for you.